Hello, good evening. Uh, let's go to chapter three of the course that we started, which is food and beverage cost control. This chapter is called the control process of food and beverages. If we say control process, we mean this will include uh, all the steps, techniques, all different ways we should use to ensure that we have effective control process in our establishment. The module, the, the, this unit has got the following objective. Uh, first of all, the purpose of this unit is to give us essential knowledge and skills to be able uh, uh, to know the importance of operation standards and how to compare them with the actual results. And we shall get to the introduction. Of course, we shall discuss menu as the foundation of the control process and then look at different techniques that we can use to ensure effective control process. Um, we shall uh, get the importance of the menu as the foundation of the control process. We shall be able to uh, learn how to apply control process techniques. And finally, uh, we shall look at the steps which involve comparing standards and standard procedures. Uh, let's go directly to the introduction part of this unit, uh, whereby we say the control means operating, regulating, and testing. We can also say that control is operating, regulating, and testing. So in any F&B department, it is very important to have uh, if for, if a, a control established, co cost control established. Because of these factors, food does not dis disappear by itself without help. So if we get uh, losses, if we, uh, we get a high cost of food in the hotel or in any food and beverage establishment, it is because it has been uh, done by someone or something happened that caused the cost to go up. So excessive excess quantity of food and beverage into the bread and the glass that may cause the cost to be uh, too high. Food are not consumed by pests unless made available by human or by employees. So if Pests come and eat some of the food, or we may find, or we find pests in our food. It is because we have made food available to the pests. So, uh, customers seldom really rarely live without paying unless we make it possible. So, it is very, very important to have control at each and every control point, as we are going to see. When we say uh, management, we talk about the food and beverage manager. So the food and beverage manager must meet the following criteria. He must be a true person who is able to grab opportunities and uh, make profit out of those opportunities. So he, he should not be a normal uh, it should be a, a, a person who is an entrepreneur who grabs opportunity and he use them to generate profit to the establishment. He must be a unique salesperson. He must be a sales, a salesperson, a person who is able to think about how to sell our products in the best way that generate income to the business. He should have a good personality with the guests. 
should be a person who can be presented, who can present himself positive to our guests, who is able to solve complaints of our guests in a good way. He must be hardworking, very important. The person who is the controller or the F&B, he must be, the F&B manager must also be a cost controller, a regulator. Yeah. So if he's able to cost, to control the cost, that means he will maximize profit. Therefore, it is very, very important to have these criteria when you are a manager. Of course, a food and beverage manager is, going, is not going to work alone. He or she needs other resources like employees. He is not enough by himself. He must get employees to help. Money, he needs money. He needs tools and equipment. He needs stock, that is inventory materials. He needs facilities, he needs time. He needs energy and standard and standard procedures are needed for him to be able to be successful. What are, what are some of the objectives that he must attain? He must carry the following activities for him to be uh, a manager, of course, planning, organizing, leading, coordinating, evaluating, controlling. So he must do this for him to be counted as a manager. And he must do these activities uh, effectively and efficiently. So one of the, uh, the, 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 the criteria of a good manager is so he must be able to manage income and expenses. When we say managing income and expenses, we mean you are able to minimize uh, expenses and maximize profit. This goal can may be achieved by suggesting sales to our customers, having creative menu prices, giving discounts, advertising, so our main uh, our, the main goal of a manager is to be able to minimize costs but maximize profit so we have the four major expense categories we have food cost beverage cost labor cost and other expenses these are four categories of cost that we normally have in any food and beverage establishment or operation when we say call control in other words is a series of coordinated activities i have also given this definition because it is somehow well detailed it shows that control is not just one thing it is a series of coordinated activities or so many activities It's a series of so many activities. You cannot say that I have done a control process and I'm done. No, it is a continuous process that has so many activities to be done for you to ensure it, its effectiveness. So it's a series of coordinated activities that help managers to ensure that the actual results of an operation closely match the planned results. I think this way it is better. So it is also a process used by managers to direct, regulate, and retrain the actions of people, restrain the actions of people so that the established goals or standards of an enterprise may be achieved. So it's a way that is used by managers. Managers use these ways to be able um, to be able to regulate, direct, and sometimes restrain actions of employees for them to achieve goals of the establishment. So cost control means now is defined as the process used by managers to regulate cost and guard it against excessive costs. So 
cost control means now we co we are controlling cost we are regulating cost we are guarding it against excessive cost we are protecting it from going up that is cost control so it is an ongoing process throughout the operation it is not a one day process it is an ongoing process if if today you have ensured effective control cost control you need you need it also today you must do it also today uh, to, today and tomorrow even tomorrow but one until always always you must ensure cost effective control process though we are not going in this chapter we are not going to go through sales control too much because that is not our main objective but sales control is also needed in establishment because you may control your cost but at the, at the end of the day sales if are not controlled properly you may uh, you may produce but not get but you don't get sales or you sell, but money is not posted, is not checked, is not deposited. So, therefore, sales control is the process undertaken to ensure that all sales results in appropriate income to the business. Whichever sale is made, it must be recorded. So we are going to go through sales control to ensure that all sales that we made have been used, have been deposited, have been recorded, and it has generated the appropriate income to the business. Uh, so the responsibility of uh, controlling cost falls under management, that is food and beverage manager. But in bigger establishments, you will find that they have hired somebody who is in charge of controlling cost only that is called a cost controller but in smaller ones you will find that food and beverage managers are the ones in charge of controlling cost instituting control when we talk about instituting control means that we are building up control by different standard and standard procedures on each and every control point of the food cycle. So when we say instituting control means we must have standards and standard procedures on each and every control point. Because the, the control cycle is not one thing, it is just a cycle. It starts with menu planning, goes to purchasing, receiving, storing, issuing, production, and service. So it's a cycle. Therefore, we must institute control processes at each and every, we must have standard and standard procedures on each and every level in the food cycle, on each and every point or in the food cycle. And those points are called control points. So we should make, uh, control is not just one thing, as we said, so it, it must be instituted, it must be established, it must be built up. These are nine control points, but we can summarize them into seven by saying menu planning is the first control point, purchasing is the th second, receiving is the third, storing, fourth, fifth, issuing, production, seventh, um, no, sixth, and serving seventh. So when you say menu planning, it is meal planning, of course. You cannot purchase what is not on the menu. So you first, you must get a menu first for you to purchase because you will now know what to purchase and what not to purchase. Then you will receive what you purchased. Then you will store what you received. Then you issue what you've stored. Then you produce what has been issued then you serve what has been produced. We said menu is the foundation of the control process. What is a menu? Menu is a list of dishes that is usually priced. Is a list of dishes that 
uh, uh, that uh, we sell in our restaurant, it must have prices. Many is the foundation of the control process, of course, because you cannot purchase what is, uh, we cannot do purchasing without having a menu. So control points are basically the operating activities. Our operating activities and the menu must be the foundation, must be the first thing to be done in the control process. So having the menu, having the menu, we are sure of what to purchase and the various quality specifications, quality, quantity, and cost specifications. Because if you are selling a main dish, maybe 10,000 rand francs, for example. So the price must be, uh, if you must purchase uh, food items that are in line with the price that we are going to sell. If the price is 10,000, you must maybe purchase items uh, to prepare that particular dish. And those items must, their cost must not, for example, exceed 30% of that price. If that is the standard, you must follow it. So the menu is going to be the foundation of each and every uh, control process. Let's look at the objectives of the cons of the control process. One is to safeguard the establishment assets. We, we, uh, we, 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 we make or we establish control process uh, to safeguard assets of the establishment, either short-term assets or long-term assets. So if we don't effective control process, the, the, the establishment assets are going, are going uh, maybe to, um, and uh, uh, will not be safe, either assets of money, that is the capital, or uh, equipments. We also um, have another objective of checking the accuracy and liability of accounting data. So we shall see how accurate it shall enable us to see how accurate and live and liable are accounting informations. If in the accounting data it says that we have uh, we have made sales of ten thousand US dollars, is it true? So the objective of the control process will be to check whether that information is true and liable. It is also to promote operational efficiency, making sure that all forms of wastage and misuses of the establishment resources must be properly controlled to ensure that objectives are achieved most effectively and efficiently. To promote operational efficiency. When we talk about efficiency, things must be done as planned. So if we, we, we go under control process, we are checking or we are ensuring that things are happening as we have uh, planned. To ensure adherence to prescribed management policies, the control process will help us to enforce policies of the management, policies of our company. Because without control, you cannot know whether policies are being observed or not. The importance of control process. It will help management in the following. It will help the management to know how the organization is doing. To what extent it meets its goals. So if if we are having effective control process, we shall know whether you are making profit or not. So without control, we cannot know whether we are in the right way or in the wrong way. To determine whether delegated tasks are being performed effectively and efficiently. 
So how can you know that tasks that have been delegated to some people are being performed well without control? And when we say without control, it means without standards and standard procedures, without doing comparison of the standards and actual results. So without cost control, there is the, the efficiency and effectiveness is going to be limited. They will be able to assess the effect of changes to the necessities of the economy. So for example, if we made changes saying that you have increased the price a little bit, if our buffet was 15,200 francs and you have changed, we made it 16,500,200 6, francs. So if we don't have effective control process, we can't know the effect of those changes. So with, with a good uh, control process, we will be able to identify problems early enough and be able to take a corrective measure early. So with, when having a control process, we shall know problems before it becomes too late. So that is also an importance. Characteristics of effective control system or control process. It must be accurate. All informations that we are given or we provide in reports or in other records, they must be accurate. If you sold, if you sold um, a group of people and they paid 100,000, you must uh, report 100,000. You can't report less than that. So it, you, it, the process must be accurate. So if we say that uh, control process must be accurate, it means it must ensure accuracy in any information, in anything that is happening, there must be accurate information. Timeliness. So Aculus will go with time. So for you to have or provide accurate information, it must not take too long. It must go with time, with time. If you have one day to calculate the, or to provide the monthly report, you must provide it in that one day. If you, are, you must do the closing stock at the end of the month, maybe on 30th, it must be done on 30th. It must be done accurately, but on in the time period given. Consistency. When measuring actual performance results, it must be done within the definition of standards. Anything that is done in the hotel, in the establishment, especially F and B operation, it must meet our standard it must be done in the definition of our standards, priority. So in the, the control process, you know, we must have priorities. And these priorities must be, uh, must base on our goals. For example, a group of people had booked for a lunch, maybe there were 10 and Maybe the facility they are going to use, uh, you, you, you find other people that need that particular facility, but on a high, and they are going to, you are going to make more sales from that group compared to the previous one that has booked. You may change, you may change uh, the facility and give it to the people who are bringing more income to a business unless the difference is too small. But if there is a big difference, one group is paying less, another one is paying more. So you prefer to go to the one that pays more, but don't just reject the, the other one, but you must excuse to them and give them another option.
So another uh, characteristic of effective control system is that um, control process must be realistic. When you say realistic, it must be real. It must be defined uh, um, properly. It must avoid confusions, whereby we have one unit which is called principle of unit to the objectives. Every component in the organization must be knowing that we have these goals and we are working to achieve them. They must come together to achieve our objectives. We cannot say that uh, meeting cost standards or cost goals will be done by the manager only. No. Not, it is not even it going to be done by only people in the production area or in the receiving area only. No, it must be done by all units in the hotel or in the restaurant. Principle of unit of command, each person in the organization should be answerable to only one direct supervisor. So we, everyone must have or must know clearly his direct supervisor. If you are working in a restaurant, you must be answerable to, your, to only one direct supervisor. Not a supervisor from housekeeping is going to come and give instructions to the restaurant. Not even a manager from front office. Because there are two things different. There are two different departments. What he or she can do if he's a manager from another department, he must pass through the manager from your respective department. And then if there is any information that is going to be given to you, your direct supervisor must be uh, the one to give you as a direction or uh, uh, he must be the one to give to delegate some tasks to you. Principle of chain of command. We must have a clear line along which authority and responsibility are delegated from the top to the bottom. So it must be clear that um, this person is the one in the alt that has the ultimate authority. The next is this one. The next is this one. The last one in authority is this one. So it must be clearly uh, identified. Another characteristic, appropriate. So control process must be appropriate. It must be friendly to our customers. It must fit into the flow of work. It must not compromise the quality of our products and services. No, it must be appropriate. Flexibility. The control process or control standards must be flexible. In case there is a change, there is a need of a change, there is a need of deviating the standard for the benefit of the hotel, that can be done. For example, you are to receive avocados, but the supplier has just brought avocados and the guests are really complaining about the avocados and no longer they are on the buffet and the guests are standing requesting for avocados. And the supplier has just arrived at the receiving area. So standards of receiving, standard and standard procedures of receiving items from the, the supplier may be deviated just because of the agency of those avocados, for example. So the standards must be flexible. Uh, It must also be specific that um, uh, you, you made these sales, for example. So standard and standard procedures must be specific. 
or control process must be specific in that if you are giving a report, for example, you must be specific. If you are reporting about the food cost, you cannot say that it was too high. It was good. It was too low. No, you must be specific and say that it was 5%, for example. It was 10%, uh, for example, to 30%, for example. So uh, it must be specific. If you made sales of 1 million, don't say that today we made a lot of sales. Be specific. Acceptability. Staff must understand these standard and standard procedures. They should be trained and participate in the implementation or in the designing of the system. Separate accountability. Each unit each operation, each department must have a separate accountability. For example, if it is a hotel that has more than two restaurants, for example, they must, each restaurant, each kitchen must have its own accountability. So that is better. It is going to tell us how, um, how is this particular restaurant doing? Is it making profit or losses? Can we close it or oh, we can still try to see whether it can work, it can give us income? Yeah, that is about the characteristics. Now techniques. When you talk about techniques, these are methods of how we can ensure effective control process. We must have standard and standard procedures regarding quality. Standard procedures regarding quantity, regarding cost. So if it is quality standards, those are rules or measures that we are going to establish in order to ensure that quality products and quality services are given to our customers. How are we going now to have quality services and quality products? That can start by saying that we must receive only quality raw materials. If it is quantity standards, we must say that the quantity must be observed. The, the portion size while serving, um, the quantity of what we purchase. We don't, we must not just purchase, we must base on the uh, total number of customers we are expecting. Standard costs. The standard cost, those are, that is cost of food. So the cost of food must be, uh, must be having standards regarding it. If, for example, standard must be say, Standard may say about the cost may, may, may tell us that we must, for example, uh, use only 30% of the food cost. So the cost of sales must not go beyond 30% of total sales. If it is so, it must be approved and accepted by the management. So those are uh, different types of standards. Then we must establish also standard procedures. When you say procedures, these are methods employed to prepare products or perform a certain job. If we say that we must receive only watermelons, for example, that are red inside, how are we going to get watermelon that are well ripe and red inside? So procedures must tell us how to achieve that particular standard. How to make sure that we receive such watermelons. So procedures are going to give us direction on how to receive a good watermelon. Maybe, for example, procedures will tell us that 
you must first give specifications to the uh, supplier and the supplier must agree that he's going to follow those specifications. And when you're receiving, for example, terminals, you should at least check 60% of the received watermelons to ensure that they are red inside. Maybe by cutting through a small cut and see how the inside look like. So that is standard procedures. Then another technique is to train. Training your staff. Give them examples. Show them how things are done. That is also very important technique setting example by behavior by actions by attitude so it is you must set example it is very unfortunate that a manager is the one that is uh, responsible to enforce policies or standards but it is unfortunate to see him deviating from our standards sometimes he may come when he is in hurry in the kitchen and is the one that said that this particular juice must be served in this particular glass. Then it is unfortunate to find him serving in maybe a bigger glass. And when he is told that, oh, sir, manager, that glass is too big. It is not the one. And he will say, no, it's okay. It's okay. Let it go to the guest. So he's deviating from the standard. And he's, yet he's a manager. Tomorrow, the employee will do the same. Finally, we may have problems in the restaurant. So we must show that our standards are, it is possible to follow standards by setting example to our staff or to our uh, members of the restaurant. Another technique is, is that we must observe and take a collective action. We have set standards and standard procedures, but you have no information about how standards and standard procedures are being practiced, are being implemented. You must observe, you must do observation. You must go and check what is happening. You must check reports daily. You must ensure that uh, you get enough information about what is happening. Then you will take a corrective action. Basing on your, the information you got. Then you are, you must also in, require records and reports. Anything that happens in the hotel must be filed and recorded properly. If today you serve the 20 customers, maybe those, those from Bener or from Becker, that group, whatever they liked, you must record, record it somewhere. Anything that was not good to them and they, they complained, you must record it. So recording information is very important and also giving reports. Another technique is disciplining employees. In the case of, in the case they have made deviations from our standards, in, in the case they are not performing well, you must give them punishments. Another technique, which is the last one that are going that we are going to discuss, is preparing and following budgets. What is a budget? Is defined as a financial plan and may this be described as a realistic expression of management goals and objective expressed in cash or financial terms. So budget is, is it will describe the future or the realistic impression of the management goals. So budget is going to meet the management goals. It is going to reflect our goals. When we say operation budget, it means it is the most uh, important budget, yes, done by F and B managers, but it is the forecast of sales activities and an estimate of what cost will be 
in the progress of generating those cells. So how, how do we get an operation budget? We must forecast cells and also estimate the cost of that particular cell that you want. That is operation budget. While a flexible budget is Uh, for example, you have you have been you have targeted that you must make this month cells which are equal to uh, five million. Then it reaches around fifteenth. You have already sold five million. It means you did not do your budget well. You may revise it and do a flexible budget. It is another budget that is going just to correct some errors that happened in the first budget. This is the sample format of an operating budget, operation budget. You must forecast total sales. How much total sales are you looking for at the end of that, a particular period? Food sales, you have targeted to have that amount. Beverage sales, you are targeting to have this amount as sales. Then you can get total sales, which is equal to 100%. And getting these percentages now, you will take sales of food times 100, divided by the total sales you get, these percentages. While food cost, while the cost of sales of the cost, the cost of food sold, it is this amount. Cost of beverage sold is this amount. And you can take it into percentages, whereby you take the cost, individual cost, which is maybe for food times 100, divided by the total sales of food, which is equal to this one, 786. So, and getting the percentage here of beverages, you take this amount, cost of beverages times 100 over sales of beverages. Then when you take total sales minus total cost of sales, you get what we call gross profit. And then after getting the gross profit, if you deduct all expenses, you will finally get what we call the net profit, Changwase, gross, Changwase loss, either profit or loss. So if expenses, other expenses are greater than the, gen, the gross profit, you will make losses, losses. But if general expenses, other expenses are less than the gross profit, it means you will make a certain profit. Getting these percentages, just take individual cost like salaries and wages times 100 divided by total sales now. We shall use total sales to get 20%. So you take 185,000 times 100 divided by total sales, which is 350,000, 15,125. So you will get percentages in that form. But remember, we must divide by total sales, not individual sales. Control steps. When you say control steps, we mean those are steps that we must go uh, through for us to have effective control process. One is establishing standard and standard procedures. You must set standards. And standards you say those are policies and guidelines. Number two, you gather information concerning the actual results and standards. You gather information about what is happening. Gather information about 
uh, the actual results. What is happening at the ground? What is happening in different sections, in different departments? Are they observing our standards? So you get information. After having information, you monitor performance and compare them. You will do comparison about this, the results and the established standards and standard procedures. So you should not just assume that things are good because you made a certain profit, no. You must verify and see how our standards are being observed. Maybe if we made $5 million as a net profit, maybe we are supposed to get maybe 15 million. It means that if we can have effective control process, we will make profit, of course. Number four, we should take appropriate actions to correct deviations from standards. If something happened, you must take a corrective action. A corrective action may be punishing, may be retraining, etc. So standards first, standard and standard procedures, you must plan them, standard regarding quality, regarding portion, regarding cost, regarding price attendance, etc. Sources of control standard information. Where, where do we get information of our standards? So you must make sure that you get them maybe um, from uh, the previous financial statement, from operating budget that specifies expected income. So that's how we get information to know how we should take or set our standards. So if you are about to set standards, you must have historical records. Establishment operating budget. Yes. How do we make standard effective? Standards must set, uh, we, we set must accurately reflect the results desired by the organization. Standards, they must meet our desired goal as our desired goals as an establishment or organization. Standards should be high enough to offer a challenge and encourage excellence, but not too high to frustrate. So standards must be well designed, too high to offer a challenge. They must be too high for to allow staff members to more, be more creative, to be more artistic, for example, on setting food on a plate. Standards should be specific and measurable of what you want to achieve. You don't say, I want to make so many sales. No, you say, I want to make sales of 10 million. Yeah. Number two, gathering information about the actual operating result. So you must get information. And these informations, you get them from books of account, from online system, all. So if these informations, you get them uh, from uh, books of accounts, for example. You, you gather information from reports. So you gather information by going on the ground to check what is happening. So information can be gotten from different areas. Then after having information of what is happening, after getting the actual results of what is really happening, not what our standard says, but what, happen, what is happening, then you, com you compare. You, say, you, you look into standards and you look at the actual results. Do comparison. If you find that there are deviations 
if you find that they are they are not matching you take a corrective action a corrective action may be to change procedures and standards or to review standards appropriate action may be to punish a appropriate action may be to train it is then last step is to evaluate the effects of a corrective action you say that for me to be more uh, for if standards to be more effective we must maybe uh, retrain our staff members if you have took them taken them under a, a certain training we must observe or evaluate the effect of that training for them to be trained has it changed has ha, did it change anything to our business yeah that is the end of uh, chapter three and if i can briefly summarize it is that when you talk about control process we mean that a control process a cost control process is not a one day it is not a one day activity it's a process and is a is it is a cost control is made of a series of coordinated activities that is uh, that help managers to ensure that standards really match uh, the actual goals really match the standard we have. So what causes variations or variances of actual results and set standard? You will do this assignment. You go and you find out, you identify what could cause variances and deviations. When you say variances, it is the difference that that is the difference that is in between actual results and st set standards. When you talk about deviations, how often do staff members deviate from uh, our standards? It means standards are not being established. They are just ignored. That, those are deviations. What causes that? Is it because of less training? Is it because of ignorance? Is it because of um staff do not like those standards is it because they don't understand them so you will find out different causes of variances and deviations between actual results and set standards you must also give relevant examples you may also explain the purpose of cost control. When you say explain the purpose of cost control, those are objectives. Define the following terms. Defining flexible budget standard cost, operating budget standard procedures, quality standards, quantity standards, sales control, cost control, and the control process. Then exercise number three, we are going to uh generate or design operating budget i'm going to write it down whereby you have total sales of beverages you have total sales of food you have cost of sales you have cost of beverages you have um, sales in terms of salaries and wages you have employee benefit you have wages and other non contribute other contribute expenses you have depreciation you have interest you have occupants cost all these costs most of them are fixed though there are some which are also variable now we are being told to make an operating budget so when making an operating budget we start by sales of food they are equal to that amount. Sales of beverages are equal to that amount. Then the costs can also be uh, used uh, the, 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 for us to get the percentages. 
we must you take the individual item times 100 divide by the its cells yeah and how do we uh, do the operation budget we follow the other format so we have total sales of food which is got to this one beverage sales which is got to this one what about the total sale you sum up these two then there are percentages we know that total sales are always equal to 100 percent so food beverages uh, the, the cost of beverages will be uh, in terms of percentage will be taking the cost of beverages times 100 divided by total sales we get that percentage then the cost of sales there are 60 36 percent of food sales so total sales, we get total sales, then times six, times 36 divided by 100, we shall get uh, the food cost in terms of percentages. The cost of beverages, for us to get 24%, we must take the cost times 100 uh, divided by, uh, no, if we get, we want the food and beverage the, the cost of beverages in terms of uh, dollars, we must um, take 24% times, times sales divided by 100. Yeah employees benefit the same thing until we get the difference which is the net net profit changwa say all loss is it clear i hope uh, i did not uh, do this exercise just to from point one to the last but i've given you hint on how to do this question so if you get any problem, kindly those, if you get any question, kindly don't hesitate to uh, WhatsApp me or call me or even uh, comment in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you uh, tomorrow for the next lesson, lesson number four, which is about cost, uh, sales, volume and profit relationship. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and if you want, if you want more other notifications too, if you get, if you want to get notified of new videos that we upload, kindly uh, subscribe. It's okay to subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.